Grab your drinks, it's gonna be a long one because today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me talking about my best college advice. I even took notes. It's all on my notebook here. So I can make sure that I say everything that I wanna say. And actually it's my best college advice and I have 10 points. I feel like each point probably has like a whole bunch of like sub points involved. But anywho, I'm gonna tie my hair up and get started. I'm actually kind of in a rush because I have a whole bunch of things to do today. I'm actually going to be going to go see Les Mis with my friend. Her and her boyfriend somehow got a free ticket to go see Les Mis. Like they're going and I think one of their coworkers can't go. So they're like looking for people to, you know, use the ticket. And she asked me and she's like, hey, do you want to go? And of course, because it's free, I'm gonna go. But that means I'm kind of in a rush to film this video. So hopefully it does not take as long as I feel it will take. Um, but who knows? I'm gonna use this Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. Um, it has SPF 20 sunscreen and it's something honestly that I've never, actually I don't think I've ever used it. So hopefully this is super blendable. <laughs> because it's kind of dark for me. Um, it doesn't look like it on the camera, but it's a little bit dark. So anyway, <clears throat> I haven't started with the college advice yet. So my first college advice is your major does not matter as much as you think it does. I feel like there's all this pressure um, when you go into college that you should know exactly what you want to do. Like everyone's all like, yeah, I want to do comp sci and I want to go into like this specific, like super specific, like software engineering thing. And it's okay not to know what you want to do. Um, it's honestly a super wild expectation for of society to be like, oh yeah, at 18, you should just know what you want to do for a career for like the rest of your life, which honestly careers change and plans change. So even if you go into college thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to major in this, you might end up doing something totally different. I do know a few people who are like, yeah, this is what I want to major in and this is what I want to do. And they've kind of always known like what path they want to be on. But those people are very rare and far between. Most people are kind of just doing their thing, just kind of, you know, seeing what fits them the best. I have no idea where I read this, but, um, and this could be totally wrong. I've read somewhere before that the average college student changes their major around three times. Some people never change their major. Some people choose a major and they're set on it and that's what they do. Some people change their major quite often. A lot of the people I met in the dorms my um, first year at Berkeley, they were going to be one major, but I mean, I've checked their LinkedIn's recently because they've all graduated and I'm kind of creepy like that. Uh, well, we've all graduated at this point, but I'm just a little bit creepy that I've checked up on their LinkedIn profiles. But anyway, I checked their LinkedIn profiles and they're a totally different major than what they said they were going to do. So it's totally okay to, you know, not be super set on what major you want to do. Oh, also, I forgot to say this at the very beginning of this video. I probably should have said it right before I started giving my college advice, but uh, I graduated in 2016 from UC Berkeley with a bachelor's degree in political science, and I also transferred from community college. So that's kind of my college experience, short and sweet. Yeah, I think everything is pretty blended. I'm going to add like a little bit more coverage. Sorry if you can hear like all the traffic outside. Um, I have all the windows open because I have no AC, so uh, the windows need to be open. It's like 90 something degrees. All right, gonna go in with some of my Rior. Also, I totally forgot to charge my camera before I started filming, so hopefully the battery lasts. We shall see. But yeah, back to your major. Your major can change and it probably will change and if it does, it's not the end of the world. I know it's really hard, especially if, you know, your parents have certain expectations that you go into a more stable career. Like, so 
for a lot of parents, you know, that's something like becoming a lawyer or a doctor or maybe an engineer. Um, super common, but I think you should just go with, when it comes to choosing your major, you never know where you're going to end up in, but I think you should just kind of go with what you're interested in because honestly, if you're going to spend four years doing something, you might as well choose something that you enjoy um, learning about and hopefully see yourself doing in the future. Um, that's my best advice for anyone who's still undecided. I would just go for what you're interested in because if you choose something specifically to make other people happy, you're not going to be happy and you're going to spend the next four years super unhappy studying a subject you don't care about and then you're going to have to try to find a job in re sort of related to that major and you're not going to care about it at all and that's just sad so <laughs> you should choose a major you enjoy and it's really hard when your parents are like financing your education and whatever to like do something different from what they want you to do. My door just opened. It was the wind. <laughs> um, yeah, but back to what I was saying, it, it's really hard to do something different from what your parents want to do, especially if they're financing your education. But I don't know, it's hard to say, but I feel like you should just find what you're really interested in and just go from there. My second advice is not really advice, but everyone in college feels like they don't belong there. For whatever reason, I feel like in college, it's really easy for all of us to have imposter syndrome, to feel like, oh, we got into the school because it's a fluke. Like, I'm not smart enough to be here. Everyone around me is so incredibly intelligent and talented, and I'm just nothing. And it's really easy to feel that way. I've definitely felt that way at times, and... That's a little bit of why I didn't really enjoy my time at Berkeley because I felt like it was really easy for me when I was there to get into like this really negative headspace and you know it was just somewhere I didn't want to be but everyone feels like an imposter you know and you can be so accomplished and still feel like you're a fake and you're just like you know when is somebody going to find out that I'm a fake like you're just waiting for somebody to realize oh that they made a mistake and that you really shouldn't be here at this university or whatever. But honestly, it's not a mistake. Out of all the applicants, you were chosen based off of your GPA and your extracurriculars and your personal statements. They chose you because they saw something in your application that they thought was amazing. Like there was something amazing about you and that's why they chose you. And even if it was a mistake, it doesn't matter, you're already in the college. Like, it doesn't matter, they're not gonna expel you unless you do something totally against their rules, but that's like a different story. It doesn't matter because somehow by luck, if it was a mistake, you were lucky enough that they made a mistake and they chose you. There's that one quote, I think it's something like, success is 99% hard work and 1% luck. You had that 1% luck to get chosen. Now the rest of it is all up to you. That 99% hard work, that's all you. And you're going to be able to get through these four years or however long it takes you to graduate with your hard work and determination. And that's all you. Like no matter how you got in, like how you get through college, which is the important part, is that's, that's just all you. It's super cheesy, but... It's true. And then there's that other quote, right? If it was luck, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So you must have had the opportunity and you were prepared for it and that's why you were chosen. That's why it happened for you. That's why you got selected to go to this university and you were accepted. You are not an imposter. Just trust me on this, okay? You guys all deserve to be there. You guys worked hard and you put in the hard work in your applications and you were chosen and that's why you're there. Forget about other people. <laughs> Everyone around you in college, that's why they were chosen, okay? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter so much how you got there. It's more like, what do you do with this opportunity now that somebody from up above, you know, like 
the administration has chosen you as a student, what do you do with this opportunity that they have given you? That's what matters the most. Oh my God, I feel like I'm talking so much and like not putting on any makeup. All right, I think that's it for the base. Um, I haven't done my makeup in so long that I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, what do I do now? Whoa, my, I'm super overexposed right now. I need to, hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that minor malfunction. Um, what was I saying? So my third advice, I think, is not as, it's, it's not as popular. I'm sure you've all heard this thing. It goes around the internet and it's something like, we all have the same amount of time in the day as Beyonce, so you have no excuse. And I think while technically true, that is something that is kind of wrong to say because there are a lot of circumstances in people's lives that put you on an uneven playing field. So basically what I'm saying is certain circumstances like having money, that's not the only one, but like having a lot of money gives you a certain amount of, you get a certain amount of advantages that comes from having money. There's also other like other circumstances that aren't related to money. For example, in when I was going to high school and community college, I lived like the super weird lifestyle where basically um, I would commute like an hour each day in high school to go to high school because I went to high school outside of my district because of these weird circumstances I'm not really gonna go into. But yeah, I went to um, a high school outside of my district and it was half an hour each way. And when I went to community college, I went to one that was further away from my house. And at that point in my life, I couldn't drive. So I was taking the public bus and it would take me like an hour each way. So having something like those kind of circumstances, they do matter. So when somebody says that they don't have enough time, that is something that can happen. Like you only have a set amount of hours in the day. There's only so much you can accomplish in one day if you want to, you know, eat and sleep and be a real human. Um, you gotta have downtime. So you cannot be working like all day, every day. It's just not a really healthy lifestyle. And I just, I feel like it's important to note that not everyone is the same. You might just need more sleep than everyone else and that's okay. Like I need to sleep like nine hours. Some people don't need to sleep that much. They can sleep six hours and feel totally fine. Then they're super happy and everything is great. But some people need more sleep. It's just like certain circumstances, certain things like that cause everyone to really not have the same amount of time in the day, even though you technically do. It's like everyone, what I'm trying to say, I guess what I'm trying to say is that everyone's needs are different and you should recognize that even though you might be doing the same exact major, taking the same exact classes as this other person, but they're doing, you know, quote unquote, so much more than you. It's not something that you should feel compelled to really compare yourself to. It's like, yes, you can always be doing more, but is it within your capabilities? Are you able to, you know, cut any more time out of your day to, you know, some people work part-time jobs. They have to work part-time jobs because, you know, their family can't afford their tuition and they have to pay, help pay, like, their own tuition. Um, some people have a much longer commute and during that commute, you can't really do anything. Um, I guess you could always, like, I don't know, read on the bus or something, but some people get motion sickness. So this, there, you know, there's all these, like, little things in everybody's day and they're kind of, like, unavoidable for them. Um, I can name a whole bunch of things from my life that to other people would seem like you don't need to do that, but somebody has to do that. And in some cases, I mean, like in my family, sometimes it ends up being me. And that means I end up sacrificing a lot of time that I would otherwise have for myself um, to do things for my parents or for my brother and just stuff like that means that not everybody has the same time. Like they're just, everyone is different. And that's all I'm trying to say. So sometimes when people say they don't have time, 
they really don't have time. Like there's nothing else that they can carve out in their schedule and like set aside time for. Like I think everyone has probably seen this graph, right? It's like a circle. There, there's three circles. It's usually um, your social life, grades, and sleep. And then I'll say something like pick two <laughs> because you can only have two. Usually the first thing to go is sleep. So without sacrificing, you know, stuff like eating and sleeping, it's really hard to carve out time. So I'm just saying sometimes you have to recognize that you don't have enough time. You don't have the time. And so really think about your priorities, what you really need to do and make time for those priorities. Just make sure you have your priorities straight because there's only a limited amount of time in each day. And there are always going to be, you know, life things that come up that you have to do that other people might not necessarily have to do, but you have to do specifically. <laughs> and it just feels kind of unfair at times, but just there are things that you just have to deal with. And I feel like that was really rambly and I hope that made sense. Basically what I'm saying is we technically all have the same amount of time, but when reality plays out, that's not really the case. I totally did not put on any makeup during that whole thing. My, so my point about not everyone has the same amount of time and priorities leads into my next point, which is you need to learn how to manage your time. College is one of the first times that people are really on their own away from family, away from that kind of support system, it's honestly super weird to be kind of managed your whole life by your parents. Like, oh, your parents did everything for you, took you places, arranged your transportation. Um, they made you food. They kind of did everything. And then you turn 18 and you go to college and all of a sudden you're just on your own. It's just kind of a weird, like, it's just kind of weird to me that that happens. That all of a sudden, ooh, I'm just, I'm an adult now and I do everything on my own. Um, it's just super weird. So you really need to learn how to manage your own time. What I find super helpful is having two planners. So I actually use a passion planner. So I will write down all my appointments and also I usually use it mostly for to-do lists and it's one of the only planners I've ever stuck to using. I think it's just because I really like the layout and I'm kind of used to it after a few years of using it. So I continue to use it. In addition to my passion planner, I also use my Google Calendar. And so I put all the events in my Google Calendar as well. And what I find super helpful about Google Calendar is that you can schedule it to send reminders to you, like 10 minutes or however many minutes before the event, they'll send it to your email. I think if you have it on your phone, they'll text you or it, there'll be like a notification that pops up. It's not really a text. And that is really helpful for just keeping me on track. Sometimes I'll block in like super specific times, like this from this time to this time I need to study for this subject or something like that. And I'll just be super, super specific about it. And I really like using both a digital calendar and a written planner because I think it just helps so much, especially since you write it down twice. Um, it's like something, it's, because you write it down twice, it's just easier to remember. And so it's harder for me to like forget that I have like some kind of event or class that I need to attend. So I think it's super helpful. Not only do you need to learn how to manage your own time, but you need to take care of yourself. And I mean this especially like nutrition wise and sleep wise, but most importantly sleep. Because as I said before, I feel like the first thing to go when people, you know, need more time, they just don't have enough time to do everything that they need to do. Um, they end up sacrificing sleep and I'm totally guilty of this too, but sleep is just so incredibly important. And I feel like, especially as a student, sleep is so important because I'm not an expert or anything, but from what I've learned from psychology class and just reading a whole bunch of things online, uh, sleep really helps with your memory and retaining information. People generally perform better on tests and such if they get to sleep and you want to sleep at least, I want to say at least six hours a night. I feel like anything less than that, you're just kind of totally dead. 
but I feel like if you sleep at least six hours a night as a student, you're pretty good. That's on like six hours a night, I think is already on like the lesser side of how much, you know, you should be sleeping, but it's better than nothing in my opinion. And that's honestly what I feel is like the secret to my success in college um, is that I slept like not a lot, but I slept a decent amount and I always made sure to sleep at 12 and get at least six hours of sleep every day before a class. Um, and I think that just, it helps so much, especially since sleeping just helps so much because when you sleep, you know, your memory consolidates and it turns into like long-term memory and blah, 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 all the stuff that I don't really know too much about. But either way, it totally helps you remember and retain information that you learned in class in lecture and all those discussion classes you attend in your study groups. It's just sleep is better for you. Sleep is a good thing and we should just all get more sleep, is my opinion. <laughs> the rest of my tips I feel are really oriented towards like studying. And so number six is to figure out what your learning style is. So there's actually seven learning types and I'm gonna read them off here. Um, so they are visual, oral, verbal, physical, logical, social, and intrapersonal. So visual is like if you learn really well, looking at like pictures and images, graphics. Oral is like if you learn really well by listening. Verbal is if you learn really well by speaking and writing. Physical is kind of like if you need to be doing something with your body or your hands. Um, it's just easier for you to like retain information that way. Um, logical, I don't really understand but it has to do with like logic and reasoning and then socials if you study well in groups or with partners um, and interpersonal is if you like to work alone and self-study so i think it's just really important to figure out your learning style because that will just help you a lot when it comes to preparing for any midterms and finals if you just know how you like to study then you'll study that way and it'll just be easier for you to retain information. So personally, I know that I really like to study in groups actually, except I'll only study in groups after I've kind of learned the information myself because that way when I'm in the group, I can, you know, help, you know, teach other people like the concepts and it will be easier for me to remember because how I learn best is if I teach it to myself first and then I try to teach it to other people. So what I would do in like the privacy of my own room is that I would kind of like just talk to myself and act like I'm both the teacher and the student and I would teach um, the material to myself. Another thing I did was um, in class I would always handwrite notes and then later on, I would type them into a Google Doc and prepare like a study guide of sorts. And also if you type into a Google Doc, it's easy to just do like control F and find what you need. I would also redraw any diagrams that I would need to memorize because that just helps you like learn it better, <laughs> or at least for me. It just helps me learn it better if I'm reading and writing it. I'm not somebody who's like super good at listening. I know some people who will record the lectures on their phone and professors are actually super nice about it. Most of them will let you um, put your phone like up at, I don't know, the stand. What, I forget what that stand is called, but they'll just let you put it up at the front of class where they're standing and let you record their lectures so you can like listen um, to it later on. I never did that because I personally don't like listening to things. I just don't retain as much information if I have to listen to it. I'd rather just read it because I'm a much faster reader than like I am a, li a listener. So I personally prefer reading, but I would take super, super detailed notes, um, almost like word for word what the professor is saying if I can, because that's just, that's just how I uh, learn the best. That's just how I retain information. My next advice for number seven is to sit in the front and I know it's kind of scary you don't have to sit in like the the way front like the very front row but I would sit in like the first like three rows because it just kind of forces you to concentrate not really like tension but I felt um a little bit stressed because you know the professor can see you in the front row and I mean they can see you in the back row if you're sleeping too but it's just so obvious if you're sleeping in the front row and that would just stress me out Okay, when I say stress, that makes it sound really bad, but I would just be kind of nervous that I would fall asleep. And so I would be too nervous, even if I was tired, to actually fall 
asleep. So that's one trick if you guys are, I don't know, constantly tired is to, I don't know, try to sit in the front because one, it's hard, it's easier to not get distracted um, because the professor is so close to you. And two, um, you know, you might be like me who gets like kind of stressed that the professor is so close to them. Also part of number seven, do not skip lecture. Lecture is so important. Do not skip ever. Why shouldn't you skip? Because you're paying for that. Like, why would you? You're paying so much money for college. I don't understand like people who would skip class because you're just like, you're paying so much money and for, you're paying so much money for a service and the service you're paying for is to go to class. And if you don't go to class, you're kind of just throwing money down the drain. Um, it's also just so much easier for you if you go to lecture because you could take your own notes instead of relying on somebody else's notes. And I feel like just being there, like even if your lecture was recorded and put up online, I feel like it's just so much better to be in person because we always tell ourselves, oh, we'll watch the video, you know, it from our dorm room and that never happens. You're just going to you're just going to not watch the videos and you're going to miss huge parts of the class and not understand anything. So you should just go to lecture and absorb as much information as you can. So sit in the front, don't lose focus, and you can get through those like 3-hour lectures because that's what you're paying for. Number 8 is to talk to your professors and TAs. This is especially important if you are anyone who is looking to go into any grad school program. You're going to need to get recommendation letters from your professors and TAs, so you really want to get close to them and for them to know that, you know, you're a very like active student who's like genuinely interested in the subject. So, get close to your professors. Also, they're super friendly. Like that's why they have office hours is for you to go and ask questions. I'm sure they're like required to have office hours, but take advantage of them. Professors are super interesting, super knowledgeable, and so are the TAs. So you should go see them, especially if you have any questions at all. They're more than happy to help because honestly, I don't think a lot of people go and it might be kind of boring for them to just sit there for like three hours or however long their office hours are and nobody shows up. So you might as well take advantage of the fact that nobody is probably going to show up and go there and ask your questions that you couldn't ask in class. So just go because this is also a service you're paying for. You are, your tuition goes into their salaries, probably. I don't know where the money actually comes from, but I'm assuming it comes from your tuition. So you paid the tuition, you should go to office hours, ask those questions, get those rec letters. I like haven't even finished my makeup yet, but honestly, I think my camera is about to run out of battery. So, you know, eye makeup is mostly done except for mascara. So we're just gonna keep on going with advice and hopefully uh, this will not run out of battery before I'm done. So number nine is college is what you make of it. It doesn't matter if you went to like, I don't know, an Ivy League school or a UC or something. I mean, there is like a certain standard that you of school you want to go to. Like you don't want to go to like one of those, you know, for profit schools where they're just trying to scam you out of your money. But after that, like any state school, any private school, like just School is school. School, like college is what you make out of it. It's an opportunity that you have and you take and you work hard and you put all your energy into it and you do well and whatever, whatever happens is what happens. I feel like there's this whole idea of like, you know, all the colleges are kind of ranked, you know, the US News whole thing and like the number one public university, Berkeley, whatever, but it honestly doesn't matter what school you go to in the end, like all anyone cares about is that you have that bachelor's degree. It doesn't matter if you go to community college and you transfer, okay, like you're getting your bachelor's degree. I did that, it's totally fine. So many people have done it and it saves money. There's no shame in it. So college is really what you make out of it. What I'm trying to say is even if you go to like just a state, like a state school and it's not like, I don't know, like in the top like 20 of, colleges in the US or whatever, you can still do well, you're going to still succeed. It's all about the work you put into it, getting and like getting those internships and just working hard and making those connections. That's how you are going to succeed in life. It's all up to you. Remember, success is 99% hard work and 1% luck. So it is what you make of it. Along the same thread, I want to encourage you guys to put yourself out there because 
there's so much stuff on campus that you can do. There's so many clubs you can join. There's so many classes you can take. And I feel like I didn't do a lot of those things when I was at Berkeley or when I was at community college because I was afraid to put myself out there, which is kind of silly. But fear really holds a lot of us back and we shouldn't let it do that. Like I was afraid of taking more like artsy classes like in film or like graphic design because I was scared I wasn't going to be creative enough. But nobody in my life has ever told me I'm not creative enough. It's always just been me telling myself and like putting myself down and telling me that I didn't have what it takes. But nobody else really cares what you're doing. They, they just don't care. Um, so just try all the things you wanna try. Don't have regrets about your college experience because that's something I really regretted is not you know going out more to clubs and participating in social activities and just being just being afraid of doing those things like I don't know why I was so afraid because now I'm just like well why didn't I and it's just kind of a regret I have and I don't want you guys to have that same kind of regret so join the clubs you want to join take the classes you want to take explore all those interests because college is such an interesting time where that's what you're supposed to do you're just supposed to explore everything that you've always wanted to explore and yeah that's all I really have to say for number nine Number 10 is to just work hard. College is just such a weird, interesting time of your life that you're never really gonna have again. You're in a t place where you are surrounded by a lot of very young, attractive, intelligent people, like the same age as you, and a lot of them probably have the same interests as you. And it's just like a thing that you're really never gonna get again. Like when you get, when you go to like grad school and stuff, that's like totally different. I mean, I haven't been to grad school myself, but I feel like it is totally different. And so is like when you start work, like work is totally different than school. So you're never gonna be in such a place that really just encourages you to like chase after the things that you're interested in, to pursue the things that you love as when you're in college. And college gives you so much time and like the freedom to do so. So you should just take advantage of that, you know, work hard and make your dreams come true. <laughs> that was super cheesy, I know. I haven't even finished my makeup. I guess I'm just gonna finish it right now. <laughs> my battery thing is like blinking at me and I'm like really scared um, that it's gonna like close any moment now, but I'm just gonna put on some blush and some highlighter and um, Hopefully that's not too much blush, honestly. I haven't used this Glossier one in so long, and it's always kind of a, it's always kind of stressful using a cream blush like this. Yeah, always super stressful. Cause I'm like, I'm always like, is this gonna blend properly? Uh, usually it does though. I've never really had a moment where it like didn't blend. So I do really like um, the cloud paints. Also, if it doesn't blend that well or like if you feel like it's just a little bit too much you can just put on some more of like your BB cream or whatever you were using and kind of like blend out the edges and soften it a little bit. I like to put some blush over my nose because I feel like it's a really natural like place for you to have blush. <laughs> I say a similar shade as if I have so many shades but I really only have like these two blushes. So I have this like super light pale pink blush so I kind of just brush it over where uh, the cloud paint was just to give it a little bit more pigment but also to help mattify the area. Then I'm going to use this cushion blush highlighter from Lancome which honestly you guys have seen all of these makeup products before so I don't know why I always introduce them to you guys again as if you haven't seen it. I feel like it gives a pretty gorgeous highlight. It just looks really natural. And I just feel like it's super easy to use. Like I'm not afraid because I don't think it ever gets to like a, like a super strong sheen and it gives you just a really natural highlight, which is what I like. I feel like in college, everyone is just so in their own heads about like everything. Like, oh, is everyone judging me? Like that person is more successful, blah, blah, blah. There's just so much comparison because there's so many like, you know, smart, intelligent people are all in the same place. And I don't know, I feel like with just those kind of personalities, it's just like you're bound to like get caught in that kind of comparison trap. And I was definitely guilty of that too. And that's exactly why I think I didn't have like a super enjoyable college experience. Like it wasn't bad, but 
it's not necessarily something that I'm like dying to relive again. I feel like now that I'm back home, I'm just in a much more healthy like environment for mentally. And when I do fall into this kind of like comparison trap, it's easier for me to snap out of it because I'm just like, what am I doing? That, so anyway, that's pretty much it for my makeup. I'm gonna be using, I'm just gonna be putting on some lipstick. And I'm not gonna do my brows because nobody can see it. All right, this is the finished makeup look. If you guys have any more questions related to college, um, Berkeley, transferring from a community college to a UC, anything really, you guys can comment down below and I'd love to help you guys out. Um, I know that there can be like a lot of anxiety about college but it's really not that scary and it's going to be such an interesting, fun, stressful time of your life. It's going to be all three at once. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.